Hey, young people. This is going to be a long one. Um, so if you want to go watch the video, you can Google um, this Real World Police channel. He did a nice job on this video. Uh, New Jersey Police Lieutenant Arrested for Drunk Driving. So if you want to go watch the video without me, so I don't have to hear you complain and cry in the comments. Uh, I'm going to try and explain kind of the different things that are going through these officers. They end up arresting their lieutenant for drunk driving. And I think it's either a corporal or a sergeant that was there and a patrolman. So I'm going to explain kind of what's going on with the with the test, what they're observing, how they're trying to cover their butt because they're on camera, how they're calling other lieutenants to get advice, how they're trying not to violate policy. Uh, a lot of things going on here. The video is fairly long, so I might be jumping forward a little bit. So he pulls him over here, and later the, the attorney makes a point to say, hey, as soon as you activated your emergency lights, he immediately pulled over, which is a good point. Uh, if he was so dangerous, why'd he pull over? Rick, you're just trying to protect the cop. Look, you don't understand the difficulties of arresting your boss. Think about it. If you saw your boss who hired you and paid your salary and has influence Jersey, over your promotion, your job, etc. And you saw him driving drunk. Would you give him a ride? Or would you call the cops and say you need to come arrest him? Would you do a citizen's arrest and call the cops and say, hey man, I just arrested my boss. Uh, okay. See, people don't understand that a cop job is still a cop job and you have bosses and, you know, you do things that you kind of have to do. So, these guys, you know, for a patrolman that knows this lieutenant may be his lieutenant again, even if he's not his lieutenant and they make him a sergeant, which they probably won't, um, he's still going to have to work for this guy. So this is the sergeant showing up because this guy's like, oh shit, it's a lieutenant. Let's listen. You gotta do what you gotta do. We got calls on. Like, how was the observation? What's up, LT? Hey, LT, how you doing? Somebody pulled it on you driving erratic. Erratic driver. So, what's happening here is the sergeant like, oh shit, I got a lieutenant, I better call my lieutenant and let him know that we got him. And they know it's on camera because, and this is why I, I, I've always been a fan of camera, I like a good witness. Now, I'm going to say something here that's probably going to piss off a lot of people. If I was this guy and I saw him driving like, I'm not a big traffic guy, I don't like ruining people's lives over things like this, so I've let... It used to be, before cameras and back in the day, if somebody was drunk, you would tell them to walk home, park their car, you'd take their keys and tell them to have somebody come pick it up from the PD tomorrow. You could do things like that without this, oh, you're, you're endangering, you know, the liberal left safety got involved and drunk drivers, mad mothers against drunk drivers. And, you know, all this came out to where now, if you have a drink, somehow you're a violent criminal and you're out there killing everybody. Uh, even though probably most accidents aren't involving alcohol, but that's beside the point. You push, the, mad mothers against drunk drivers push their agenda very well and they got a lot of uh, support and they've made pretty much drunk driving a life-changing, career-ending uh, financial gain for people who, I mean, it's just ridiculous. But so, this lieutenant's calling his lieutenant. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry to bother you. Um, um, my mic's live, so you know, at this point, I mean, my uh, camera. We had an erratic driver call. Um, it, Lieutenant Chu. We got him on a 38, uh, Honeysuckle and Idell. 
I'm, I'm in charge right now. I just want to call and let you know. Uh, I'm not saying that yet. I I haven't went up to the. I knew she just went up to the car. I kind of stayed back. I. So the lieutenant's saying, "Hey, do you think he's drunk yet?" Or See, there's ways, even with a camera, to kind of say, I mean, the way this guy could have got around this is I could have walked up, saw it was my lieutenant, thinking he's a good dude. Maybe he's got a drink a problem. Maybe he just made a bedroom area. He lives, he's less than a block away from his house. I'd have walked up and said, hey, LT, somebody called you in for uh, driving out of lane when I was behind you. It looked like you were out of lane. I'll, I'll see you later. You're almost home. Bye. And I'd have left. Now, I might have gotten written up for that, for saying, why didn't you do other tests? I would have just said, hey, I, I didn't smell alcohol. I didn't investigate it for a drunk driving. I wasn't with his contact much. It was so short, he was right around the corner. I just figured he was talking on the phone or doing something stupid. It wasn't that big of a deal. I let him go. And I'd have moved on with my day. Uh, but, had the cop did that, and a lieutenant drove down a road and crashed, he would be screwed. But he would still only be screwed because they'd have to prove that he knew he was drunk. The longer you contact, and I'm giving tips to cops here, and I know I'm going to be pissing off other people, but the longer you contact somebody, the more you kind of back yourselves in the court. That's why I tell people, don't call the cops. When government gets involved, there's bad things that happen. Don't call 911. The cops come for family disturbance and stuff. You get me involved, and the longer I'm there, the more I have to do. It takes it out of my hands for me to use common sense or to, uh, you know, de-escalate the situation, talk people down, and then move on with my day. Can't do that anymore as a cop. Everything's mandatory. You got to hook. You got to get stats. You got to freaking, you know, do check boxes, do this and do that. So, you know, you want to blame the cops for a lot of this, but a lot of this is liberal policies. I know everybody thinks I'm blaming the liberals. Liberal policies of more government, more rules. We need more controls. We need to make more rules to control people. And when you get that, this is why you have the police state you have. Uh, you, you can call it what you want, but that's these cops here, the longer they contact him, the less they can do. And this lieutenant doesn't handle it that well, but he's drunk. No drunk handles being arrested well. I mean, that's just got to be expected. Street from uh, his, his residence. Okay. Sir. Yes, sir. Did you see who was? Did you tell him to stand by? Yeah. I'm on the phone with the little tenor right now. He told me to hack like for a minute. You want? Yes. You? Okay. So what's going through this guy's mind and the sergeant's mind? What people don't understand also is there are going to be cops out there that are going to be pissed at these two for not letting them go. Even though it's on camera, even though they know they can't, even they would have probably done the same thing, they're still going to be pissed at these two cops. And it's going to cause division in the ranks and in people. The people who like the lieutenant are going to hate these guys. The people who don't like the lieutenant are going to think these guys are heroes. But these guys who were doing nothing but their job are now put in a situation where they're going to make enemies. And I know everybody else is like, well, that's their job, Rick, and they took an oath that they should. Look, nobody likes to run around and set off line landmines where you work. It's just not good for long-term career plans. So if you want to run around and, 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 and blow up everybody and, and sit out in the parking lot and call the police on everybody that you, nobody does that, but everybody expects cops to do that. So I'm not defending that cops that, hide crimes, real crimes of cops like planning evidence. Now, I, I, this, this is a different thing. This is a guy who had a few much drink. He made it all the way home without having an accident. He's a block from his freaking house. Uh, you can make him walk. You had another guy show up who could drive his car. There's a lot of ways this could be handled without this huge conspiracy. Cops are always... Look, whatever. I mean, look. If anybody pulled over their mom or saw their mom drunk driving, how many of you would freaking call the cops and want her to be arrested? Because that's the procedure. That's the law. That's the policy. So we, it's just ridiculous sometimes the way people want. And I know I'm going to get a lot of cop haters here who's going to think I'm protecting and doing a blue line. 
I got no problem calling out cops bad behavior. These cops are put in a bad situation because of the fallout that people don't understand. Do not turn it on. Oh, that's I switched the cameras up. What did he say? I, I was behind him. I was, but I was behind you. Did you get any? Yes. <laughs> This guy cracks me up. He doesn't want to answer yes, but the sergeant put him in a spot. So he asked him on camera, did you see a bad driving pattern? And the, and the guy's like, shit, I don't. You can tell his body language is I don't want to answer, but he gives a very small nod. Yes. And now he's going to ask him if he smelt alcohol and he's going to pause and say no. So technically, I think the guy lied because in his report, he says he does. But again... This isn't a lie that this guy's out trying to put people in jail that shouldn't be in. And I, I just did a video, I don't know if I posted before or after this one, where a cop uh, just got caught planting evidence. And I think he ought to be under the jail, and I trashed him because he's a dirty cop. But this guy saying, no, he didn't smell alcohol because he's on the spot. <laughs> I don't have a big problem with that. I know people are going to think I'm a jackboot supporting a cop, but I just don't have a problem with it. The guy's in a tough spot. He's like, shit, man, I don't, I don't want to hook the lieutenant. I don't, I don't want to do this. I mean, the guy's got my back and whatever. We got to do what we got to do. We're going to have to lock him up. <laughs> See that pause? Did you smell alcohol? Mm, I better shake my head. No, man. I don't want to. I don't want to say yes. See what he's thinking is maybe if I don't say there's a lot of indicators that he's drunk, then I won't have to do the drunk test and we won't get jammed up for violating policy or giving him special treatment. And if he had did that when he first walked up to the car, hey LT, you almost home? Sorry, man. Somebody called in a reckless driver. Maybe it was you. Maybe it wasn't. They said a black truck. Have a nice day and leave. He would have minimized his contact. He wouldn't have been there long enough to smell. He wouldn't have been there long enough to identify all the indicators. But Rick, if that was somebody else, he would have took him to jail. I agree. And I don't like I don't like taking people to jail and ruining their lives for this shit if, they, if you can drive home. But unfortunately, you know, cops are caught in this policy thing to where they can't think, they can't use good judgment, they can't be peace officers. They have to be revenue generators and stat generators. Don't, you told him to just hang tight. Mm -hmm. You didn't observe any alcohol in the thing or anything. I know you probably it's high truck. Is there an odor yet or anything? No. <laughs> you didn't get an odor. <laughs> All right. Yes, yeah, so I think he's lying. Big deal. I gotta call Edwards. He doesn't lie when he writes his report and signs. Just to let him know I can't pick him up. I'm gonna pull him out. This guy wants a lieutenant to come out so he doesn't have to be the bad guy. Hey, I'm going to be... Lieutenants don't um, want to come out really picky. because they don't want to be the bad guy. You drive in, we have an incident. We'll deal with it later. So, in these situations, yeah, my, my nobody really wants to handle the car. We're on a 38 right now with uh, someone we work with. Hang on one second. Hang on one second. We had an erratic driver call um, Lieutenant Chu, with Lieutenant Chu. Um, we pulled him over. We're doing we're doing some investigation right now. I'm waiting for Lieutenant Philly to come back. So I'm I'm gonna be late picking up. Obviously, if you could drive in, all right. All right, thanks. We shut these off for a time, real quick. Hang on. Hey, hey, LT. This is so everybody's getting briefed in the PD. They're calling the chief. They're calling the captain. They're calling everybody, and uh, everybody's kind of like, hey, man. Just tell them to go by the book. That's what everybody's okay. default is. Okay. Nobody wants to say cover it up, help them. They're all just saying yeah, just we're do not it gonna by the book. Man. It's on video. Or anything. Just okay. do it by the book. So that's Absolutely. the only support yep. you're gonna get as a cop if you call and we're look for the way out. We can't meet our cameras But it gives these guys yes, out because right. they were told in order to do it by the book. In. So now any other cop will know you didn't have a choice, man. You were told you had to do it. Still not good, and this lieutenant almost gets in a fight a couple times and resists. And these guys talk him down pretty good, but he's being drunk. So this a reaction. Most drunk people are no people. Hey, LT. So we had the erratic driver call on you. Um, I guess knew she had some observation. We have to handle this like anything else. He's gonna ask you to step out. We already talked to the lieutenant really. All right. He's, 
He's gonna, he's gonna make sure you're safe to operate the vehicle. I was driving half a mile. I understand, but everything's recorded now, sir. You know that we gotta handle it how we have to handle it. Yeah. It's during this video, Lieutenant says I understand probably 20 times, but he doesn't understand because he's over three times the legal limit, which is pretty bad. He's a point three six, so he's he's pretty drunk. But he handles his drinking, because he's probably a hardcore alcoholic, he drinks all the time, he handles it pretty well. I mean, he's still, he's what I call a functioning drunk. Some drunks, you know, two beers and they're falling and bouncing off walls. Other people drink a 12-pack or, 12, you know, 30-pack. And they can still function and they can still operate. Are they really safe to operate a motor vehicle? Probably not. But th there's different levels of drunks in your that's why you do the test to see if he's really impaired. Now this guy's obviously impaired. And he's obviously drunk at 3.6. But somehow he drove all the way home and he didn't get in a crash. Well, Rick, you're just protecting him because he cop. No, I'm not. There's a lot of there's a lot of civilians that operate when they're drunk. And they drive all the way home, they drive drunk all the time. So, I mean, this this big conception that if you have a drink, somehow you're gonna go on a highway floor your car, go 100 miles an hour, and take out a bunch of families. It's just mind brainwashing is BS. Trust us, we don't want to be put in this position either. Yeah. I get it, but I don't want to get out. Can you step out, sir? He's just gonna talk to you. You know how it is. He's gonna ask you some questions. Make sure you're all right. I'm fine. Can you take your hat off for me, please, sir? Mm -hmm. You take your hat off. Get together. Oh. Hands down your side. LT, let's get him off the. We don't want to do it in the middle of the road here. Let's get him off the side. I'm gonna kill my lights too. All right. I just put the back on. Right, LT, let's get you out of the middle of the road. We don't want you in the middle of the road here. Let's go off to the side. See, by doing the test right then, you don't ask him to do a whole bunch of things. The more you ask him to do, the more he's going to get resistive. And I know the people are going to be saying, well, if he wasn't a cop, they wouldn't care. You're right. But if a frog had wings, he wouldn't bump his ass when he jumped. He is a cop, and they do care, and they got to work with him, and they got to go by the books, and they don't want to violate policy, and they don't want to have the whole department hating on him because they arrest another cop, and they don't want to deal with the fallout if they do something wrong, and if they let him go, somebody somebody up the chain may want this guy. And they're like, you guys freaking get, well, softballed it. I'm going to come after you because you didn't do it right. Somebody who loves him is going to say, you know what, you didn't really need to be that hard on him, so I'm going to come after you. I mean, these guys who are doing this are in a sh you know, shit storm, and they've got really no way to hide. I'll get him, Mike. Not your county. I'll give you 21. I already let Edwards know he's driving in. You got it. There's nothing you can do. Go ahead. I'll be up there with you. 9021. Make your original relief if possible. Now, some would say all this calling and stalling is giving him a chance to process the alcohol and to go lower. It depends when he stopped drinking. If he just left a bar and chugged a couple drinks, his alcohol content is going up, not down. Most people, if they stop drinking an hour or so before they drive, they're going down. So the longer you can prolong before they blow, the lower the test is going to be. So some would argue they're taking still all this time contacting. If I was a lawyer, that's what I would be saying is, you know what? My client was actually going up and he wasn't as high, but he can't say that at 3.2 because that means he was at a 3 or he was at a 2.5, which is way over the limit. So he really can't give that argument. But if it was close... He could say, hey, when you stopped him, he was lower and he was on the way up. But because you took so long to do the test and do all this, you allowed his blood alcohol. When you stopped him, he was actually under the limit. Uh, but anyway, I, let's go. Nine five, we talk a little bit. All right, let's go check your eyes real quick. Hands on your side, feet together. Did you dip my finger? I want you to follow so with your eyes. So what he's doing is the vertical or the nystagmus test. Uh, 
checking the smooth tracking of the eyes, not supposed to move your head. This is a standard field sobriety test that they do. Um, after he does the left and right, he's going to do what's called a vertical. If you have a vertical nystagma, right now the eye is popping and it's not tracking smoothly. When, when, when you're drunk, your eye jerks. And the more drunk you are, notice the swaying and the moving back and forth. All this is on video now. Cops used to have to document all this. The other thing is, is he following directions? Is he moving his head? Is he keeping his hands where I told him? Is he leaning on the truck? Is he wobbling? Is he stopping the test? Is he cooperating with the test? All these things are going to be documented with video now. It's freaking easy, man. We just have to do all this, taking notes while we're doing our uh, mm -hmm. I see him looking away, see him not really following instructions. Now, if this guy takes too much time to do the test, he's going to get dogged. If he does it too fast, he's going to get dogged. So this cop's like, remember all my training, do it exactly right. Somebody will be arguing for it. He changed it because he was a cop. Isn't that true? Is it true you were hard on him? Stay right here for me. Is it true you were easier on him because he was a cop? Left foot on the line. You use the imaginary line. I want you to place your right foot in front of your left foot. Heel to toe contact. Put your hands down to your side. I want you to remain in that position. See, the guy can follow instructions and stand balanced. This is a really tough test to do. If you've been drinking just a little bit. Put your left foot. Touch the heel touch your right foot. Call 90. And you'll notice he breaks. He, he's not really got one foot in front of the other. Can you hear And the guy just walks off and starts going. So this is going to be failure to follow instructions, failure to listen, failure to understand the instructions. He's putting his hands in his pocket, he's holding yeah, people down, he's not walking real tight. And now he leans back on the truck. Uh, yeah, and the lieutenant's doing a little bit of this because, like, look, man, I'm a fucking cop. I know I can walk. Shit, just stand by me. I'll walk. give you a call when I And he's getting pissed at these cops One, two, because he knows they're gathering evidence. I tell people, oh, start the test. No. You can fill sobriety tests. Test they they just gather evidence on you. You're either you drunk or you're not, and the breath testing is going to show it. And, and when you take a license, you agree that you have to take You agree that you're going to take the breath test. Wobbling, not held to toe, off balance, staggering, uh, looking down, you should be looking straight ahead, lost balance on the turn, walking back, staggering, failed to maintain your. I mean, he failed this test miserably. Of course, cop doesn't want to say that, you know. Uh, and in the report afterwards, you can kind of read the word, kind of soft too. But like if you're choosing, you're going to raise that leg approximately six inches off the ground. You're going to keep your foot parallel to the ground. This is a really hard test. Down. Call one way to stand. One thousand one. Point your toe. One thousand three. Count one thousand one. One thousand two. You usually do it for thirty seconds. You understand those instructions? Usually fall about yeah. six or seven. Begin. They're drunk. They'll start tapping your foot. Do you not wish to complete the test, sir? So he's leaning on the truck. You have to get your hand off the truck, sir. Oh. Okay, I'll give it to you again. Hands together, feet down to your side. You can raise either leg of your choice. Prox Excuse me. You're going to keep your foot parallel to the ground. And you're going to count. 1,001, 1,002, 1,003. Why are you counting? I want you to look down at your toe. Suspect keep both knees locked down. Position. You understand? Fail to understand and follow directions. You know what? Hold on. What? LT. You don't, you don't want to complete the test? No, I don't. Okay. You probably should have never started the test. Frick, if that was someone else, they would just throw me cuffs. You're right. I'm not arguing you that. Get, you don't want to complete the test, sir? I'm just trying to explain the cop's mindset no. on how they're in a no. tough situation and nobody wants to see that. They just want to... The blue line! So oh, you know cops lie! They plan evidence! You know what, John? I get it. You know, you don't have your weapon on you or anything. You don't have any firearms. No, it's no. shit. No, it's stuff I got ass. Sorry, here, I'll Shit, no. Okay. No. All right. Your observations. LT, we're gonna have to bring in put you on the box. So the sergeant tries to put it on a poor patrol dude. <laughs> What's your observation? He wants him to say he failed. And I think he's drunk. And this guy doesn't want to say it. So finally the sergeant gets the clue and goes, okay, uh, 
you know, I would have said as a patrolman, hey, Sarge, you got more experience than me. What's your opinion? <laughs> I'd have put that shit right back on the sergeant. <laughs> Based on, on the test, you know we don't want to do this. We have to do. We have to do everything's recorded. You understand that? No, I get that. No, you don't get it. So I mean, you got to realize this lieutenant's seen his whole career, his job, everything kind of going down the tubes here. You don't want to grab your phone or anything. But he's drunk. Your phone's not on you, right? I'm going to so check which one's going on. on. Okay. Kind of wants special treatment. Kind of thinks these guys ought to give him some professional treatment. Alright, nothing personal. Our safety in yours. You know what we have to do. I just want to check to make sure you don't have anything on you. Alright, <laughs> You know what, John? That was about the weakest path I've ever freaking seen. <laughs> Alright, can, can you walk back to this car with us, please? No, you know what? What's it? See, they're trying not to treat him like a criminal. But unfortunately, thanks to cameras, thanks to mandatory more laws, you know, encyclopedias of laws and policies. I would love to know who called. You can find that out. You know that. You can find out. I don't know who called. It doesn't matter who called. I, don't, I do not know, but you know you'll be able to find that what out. Do you think you were drinking with a snitch on one of your buddy, drinking buddies called you? We did not know we were looking for this truck, sir. Came out as an erratic driver. Handled how any cops would have. But unfortunately, we're in a situation now. No, no, I get it. No, you don't get it. I totally get it. Yes, sir. I mean, I've never disrespect. No, I wouldn't. And I wouldn't disrespect you either, sir. So, with all respect, can we get you back there so we can get you off the street? Get you. Get away from this. I'm not going back to that PD. Okay, is that 148? Is that resisting? I said 148. That's the California term. Is that resisting or obstructing when he says I'm not going to the PD? Yeah. Are they going to charge him with that? No. They're going to talk him down and try to deal with this the best they can. Wait. Our hands are tied. I, mean, I, hope, I hope you understand. I, I totally I get it. Get it. And we don't want to make the situation any worse, sir. No, listen. You know? I, 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 I know you're not going to make it worse. I understand that. I know you wouldn't. That's what I'm saying. We can get you in the back of the car, get you Notice out of here. Notice his body language, how he wants to keep distance. He keeps trying to distance himself from this, but he's got to stay close enough to kind of back the guy up in case the lieutenant does freak out. He's got a guarded, his hands in front, it's kind of a guarded position, but you can just tell this cop is like, man, I don't want to be here and I don't want to do this, but shit, I'm, I gotta do it. Burning alcohol. Let me ask you this. Bargain. Can I have 20 minutes? Sir, you know we cannot do that. Everything is... You, sir, everything's No, no I get it. I, get, I don't understand I totally, why he wanted 20 minutes. Did he want 20 minutes to pee? Did he want 20 minutes to eat his gun? Did What did he want 20 minutes for? I, I didn't get that, and I'm not sure he got it, but he's just... He's trying to delay and buy time. He just doesn't want to face the fact that, dude, they got you. Go down, let them write your ticket, blow on the stinking machine, and be done with it and get it over with. The longer it goes on, the worse it gets. But he's not thinking clearly. I get it. See, people are starting to drive by. LT, let's get you out of here, okay? Can, we, can, you, can you come with us? Yeah. Okay. Let's go in the back of Mike's car. We'll get you out of here. Yeah. Make sure you know what? what? What's up? I can't let you get in the car. You know that. Well, then you drive it. Well, if you have someone on team, we can get it. I see Mr. Eccles here. We can Yo, try to get him to drive my truck home, please. The keys are in it. We'll, we'll handle that, LT. We'll handle that. I don't know why they won't let this guy drive his truck on. You got a licensed driver though, so won't drive a truck. There's no reason to tow. Probably their policy is they've changed it because in the hood, when you 
stop somebody and you take them to jail, they'll scream out to anybody, yo, man, take my car so they don't tow it. And then when they get out of jail, they'll be filing a police report that their car was stolen. And then so it's like, you know what? We're going to make a policy now. We only release the cars to the registered owner. That way we don't have to take stolen reports when you get out of jail. And so that's probably why this policy came about, that they can't release it except to the RO. Give Frank a search warrant. Okay, hold on. Don't put him in the back. Huh? I'm saying you cuff him in the front. Okay, so this is funny. He agrees to get in the car now after they talk to him, but he gets in the front seat. <laughs> then they have to move him to the back seat, and he don't like that. And then they got to put handcuffs on him, and he don't like that. Hey, Rob. Hey. What can I do, man? Not much any of us can do, unfortunately. No, we can't do that, Mike. Yeah, just just do me a favor, hang tight, all right? LT, you know you can't do that, sir. We can't have you in the front seat. I can't have you in the front seat. We're not going to cuff you in the back, okay? We're not going to cuff you in the back, but you got to ride in the back seat. So, again, another policy. All arrestees must be in the back seat handcuffed. So, a lot of policies say handcuffed in the rear. Obviously, their policy doesn't, or they're violating policy. We're gonna do it in the front, all right? Are you serious? Yeah, sir. You so understand? See, this guy's more and more making it about you cops are doing me wrong, and not that I screwed up and I shouldn't have drunk and drive. You hate being on this, John. John. Please, please, John. Please, John. I don't, John. Please. We'll get you the help you need. The longer you just... prolong contact, the more it goes bad and it's used against you. And that goes for civilians or cops or anybody. The longer you're involved with government and you get them in their lives, the deeper government gets in your lives and the more damage they do. Come on. Price's attorney didn't say he was assaulted by the cops when they patted him on the shoulder. Why did they use physical force on my client? But he didn't. You know we don't want to do this to you. All right, but well we gotta get you. We gotta, we gotta, we gotta get this process up. People are starting to calm. We're all gonna get. You don't want you know what? other people responding out here, you. sir. I would like just, you. Just this is me. what's gonna happen. We're gonna get you behind this door so no one sees. Mike's gonna put the cuffs on you in the, in the back. No, Wait. no, there's no cuffs. Negative, no cuffs. So again, it's all a bargaining tool with drunks. You gotta get little steps. Let me get you out of the front seat. Let me get you in the car. Then you get in the wrong seat. Now let me get you in the back. Now let me get you cuffed. They're bargaining with him. And because he's not thinking clearly, he, he, it just, it's making him look bad. And now if the administration wants him, they're going to be saying, Hey, man, as a lieutenant, you tried to gain favor because of your position. You started making, you weren't cooperative with the officers. You told them no this many times. You didn't make it easy. Not only did you get drunk, but when you were drunk, you acted unprofessional to our cops, and you're a lieutenant. So it just gets worse and worse for this guy. Yeah, what has to do with it? Policies and procedures. Let me call the LT. Just, you can shut the door for now. So he says no cuffs, and they're like, cool, we got him in the car. I would have been fine with this. So what? I don't cuff him. That's not, to me, it's a policy violation, but it's not a, it's not going to change the criminal case. It doesn't matter whether or not he's going to get convicted. It's not going to be used in court. The only thing that's going to be used is that the cop didn't follow policy and he should have been handcuffed. Big freaking deal. It, I mean, if I was Sarge there, I'd be like, well, I don't give it. Transport him without handcuffs. If you're if you're comfortable with it, he's your arrestee. He's in a caged area. We've already patted him down. He's a cop. If you want to transport him on handcuff, knock yourself out. I don't give a shit. But and I'll take the consequences. And you can write me up later or give me a day on the beach and I'll take a freaking day off for it. Whatever. Did you search him? Make sure you search him like this is going to be... See, this guy knows every contact we have to do with this guy gives us another opportunity for resisting or to set him off. Why don't we limit our contact and get him to the freaking PD and get this over with? The sergeant's like, oh, or the corporal is like, oh, man, we got to do it by the book. You got to search him. You got to search all the restees. The policy says you got to search him before you put him in the car. If you didn't search him, now you got to search him. Oh, my God. Really? So they're checking boxes, which is 
just pain in the ass boxes, but it just increases the opportunity for something to go wrong. I pair up for weapons, but just do a, you know this is going to be scrutinized. I'm going to start you with the guy. Arms crossed, very defensive. Doesn't want to be touched. Nosey's upset, Nosey's screwed. Just to me, he's just going to stay by the car with him. Right. No ball, I'm just joking. Alright, based on observations, um, he's going to dress it for 450. Um, he, he's okay with us. He doesn't want the handcuffs on. I'm trying to give him So he asked Lieutenant. Is he doesn't want the handcuffs to really transport him around because he's looking for an out for the policy. If Lieutenant says yeah, okay. then it's not on the sergeant, it's on the Lieutenant. Okay, because... Evidently, the tell Lieutenant said no. I appreciate Handcuff it. Because he's being cooperative and stuff. This is probably Lieutenant that got passed over for promotion or this guy didn't mm. like or whatever. Okay, I understood. And um, one of his friends will... One, I'm sorry. Yeah, we'll read him his rights when we get 19. Absolutely. Um, one of his friends rolled up on scene. Can we turn the truck over to him, or do you want that? Uh, Nobody's going to get fired over not handcuffing well. him. I mean, cops just don't want I know. Big freaking deal. Violate I understand. Policy a I understand. Policies violate all the time. Yes, sir. It's up to the agency on whether they want to force it. Oh, okay. And you can fight it. I understand. And union I understand. Fortunately, okay. deal with it that way. Yes, sir. Uh, I just, uh, Hank. Hey. Nah, we can't. We can't let you. Oh, okay. But we're gonna make him happy and let let him think that way. We don't want to upset him. No, and they don't want to think that his want. buddy's taking his car not to upset so him. So just uh, actually, they're gonna tell him. No, do me a favor. Wait by your truck. I'll come talk to you in two minutes. All right. Yeah. Can we even do it in the front. But we gotta do it. LT. LT. We just talked to Lieutenant Perilli. We have to in the front. We'll do so it right this here. So the corporal is selling to it to him that hey man, Lieutenant told us to do this. It's not us. It's a lieutenant. And he finally agrees. Go behind your back. Okay? Please no. co Please cooperate John, with us. come on. John, we don't want this to turn into anything more. You know that. We don't want it. But we cannot lose our jobs. You understand, sir? You're my first sergeant. Thank you. So this cop is using reasoning. I wish cops did this to everybody they dealt with, but they don't. And I mean, I, I can't defend that. So it is what it is. Takes the handcuffs. All right. More humiliation. Came out here. I'm with the being stopped by his I'm going to turn the truck and I'll call for John's law. He's being happy to test by his truth. We'll figure it out. Um, um, I'll call by Eddie. Proof. There's got to be a 630 guy in there. Like proof. So Not this guy's going with it. Who cares? Actually, I'm like 21 with it. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go. I don't like cops doing dirty shit. I'm gonna give you 21 with all information. This guy shouldn't be judged his whole life because he got over some freaking drunk driver. Big deal. Yeah, I'm. Um, well, you do call your just call your mileage out. I'm letting what's going on. Just say I'm in route to 19 and just call your mileage. We gotta do everything pretty much by the book here. I know. Okay, we got 195, John's Law, it's a reg registered owner. If it saves one child, I know. Can, can you, oh, it's already hope for John's Law, we got 1095, and you should be calling out his mileage. Thank you. Let's put search, he's got to do a search to look for open containers. Smells of two bottles, make sure they're water. And they don't so much more to search, which is cool. They just move on. Last thing you want to do is search around and find something else. They would sign, no, they would. But what do you think, Lieutenant's riding around with freaking bags of coke selling it? If he was making all that money, he'd have somebody else driving him around. You come over here, bro. I have to get it. Okay, so let's go ahead. He kind of pretty much tells them here they transport them. But we've had guys get these before. A couple of reports, I know. which kind of what, what, some other thing. Again, if you uh, want to go back and watch this, um, you're more than welcome to go to the first guy. Thanks. Okay. My slow ass internet.
Ahead. All right, here we go. So this is a a thing from the attorney. Uh, so his attorney's kind of like questioning some things about the background and what was the training and the observation period. Uh, you know, he he's challenging the failure to maintain the lane while in the influence was transported. He was able to comply with the patrolman's directions at that point. There was no additional. He's trying to minimize for the judge to say, well, even though he was a 3 6, he wasn't that drunk. Um, so they go over at the. He smells the alcohol. Again, you can pause this and read it. Uh, bloodshot, watery eyes. The attorney kind of questions that on whether or not that's really a sign of drunk driving. Uh, he wants to know if the, the officer doing the field sobriety test was properly trained. They always attack officers' training. Uh, did he receive and review documents? He didn't get that for discovery, so he's he's causing them to produce more information so he can find holes in the case. Um, this is just all the identifying information. I thought there was one point to where he was flipping them off. I wonder if I skip past that. I'll have to pause this to go find it. So they went over this and that. Uh, I think he, they went over to where he wouldn't give the test. Um, here might have been it. Let's see. Statement, breath, prior to minutes test, uh, cell phones removed. Uh, at the conclusion, was transported to the hospital. He didn't want to go to the hospital, I think, is what they said. Um <laughs> When asked his myth, but I'm definitely not fucking doing that. So he kept saying he wasn't going to go back to the PD. He wasn't going to get in the back seat. He wasn't going to get handcuffed. Now he's not taken for photos. And then after we talked to him, he agreed to take it. Um, point three six. That's pretty high. That's why they had to transport in a hospital. You can go in a coma when you're over point three zero. So. Uh, you know, they don't want him dying, so they took him to the hospital. Here's the part where, uh, you know, they were asking him to do it. <laughs> Corporal administrative processing, 20 minutes observation. The defendant sat mostly leaning forward with his hands on his knees. Okay, I read the defendant Miranda warning. <laughs> I completed each sentence of the form, and after each question, he raised his right hand and extended his middle finger. <laughs> In my direction, upon asking the last question, if he wanted to answer the question, he extended his middle finger. I advised I would consider that. <laughs> I'm telling you, man, cops have a brutal... If this cop stayed on the job and this lieutenant was around, this shit is going to be blown up and taped to his locker and in the hallway. They'll be sending memos. It'll be a signature on someone's email when they send this guy any... <laughs> drug driving these cops are all crooked whatever get over it look i'm trying to explain to you what cops go through and so you understand how a cop thinks and why cops do what they do to get better understanding you can sit there and just hate them and think they're all freaking mean devils and they were all born to go out and make people miserable but they're still humans all right we'll end that there y'all have a good one